Well, the official start of the hurricane season is less than three weeks away, and it's not just coastal communities that need to be aware of the tropics. Communities far inland, far from the shoreline, have seen their share of costly impacts from the aftermath of hurricanes long after landfall. Yes, and in the past few years, the National Weather Service has added extreme wind warnings to its list of alerts. These are issued for major hurricanes, Cat 3 or higher, with winds of 115 miles per hour or stronger. This inland wind threat is uh, no, nothing to sneeze at. We've seen significant mm -hmm. damage go hundreds of miles from the coast. And in some cases, like with Hurricane Michael back in October 2018, the vast majority of the economic losses were from the inland wind damage, not from the storm surge. And this was by a factor of about 10. Yeah, well, it went so far in with those strong winds. Yeah. You know, I know you saw that water there in the foreground of this video, but look at all the trees that have been snapped. And this was so widespread, completely completely snapped here. So, so many trees lost, but of course, also so much agricultural land was lost as well. Yeah, and the agricultural and the crop losses were very significant. This is an estimate of what the inland wind gust was with Michael as it moved uh, from Florida into Georgia and then thereafter. Large areas, Jen was mentioning, of tropical storm force wind gusts, mm -hmm. that can do a lot of damage. But of course, even the higher wind gusts right near the center of Michael as it moved inland brought catastrophic damage hundreds of miles from the coast. Yeah, Look how far the Cat 3 winds yeah. got, all the way up into South Georgia, all the way through the Florida Panhandle. And so, um, you know, of course, it was in incredibly expensive in terms of the damage that was caused, the threat to life and property, and look at all the timber damage. Yeah, this is from the Florida Forest Service going back and looking at the damage just from the trees and the foresting in parts of North Florida and Georgia went hundreds of miles in and all the way up to Macon, Georgia. You can drive south on I-75 from Atlanta and cut across the damaged swath from Michael. Even still, uh, it was remarkable what it did inland. Yeah, and so there is this extreme wind warning that can be issued in extreme cases like this. The National Weather Services offices uh, issue it for sustained wind of 115 miles per hour or greater, category three or greater, when conditions are expected to begin within the hour. So uh, think about it as like an inland um, hurricane warning, but kind of like a tornado warning, kind of like a severe thunderstorm warning here. It's imminent. It's occurring. And so you need to seek shelter much like you would with those other kind of warnings. Yeah. Treat it like a tornado warning. This is an excellent addition, I think, to our inland threats where you go to the lowest floor interior room and take shelter because the worst part of the hurricane inland is going to be moving through. Yes. Now, we saw this with Hurricane Zeta that made landfall in Louisiana in 2020, um, and it wasn't necessarily up to that status of category three wind, but it was a lot of wind that went well inland. We just want to talk about how it wasn't just in Louisiana or Mississippi or even Alabama. This is Ackworth, Georgia, which is in the Atlanta metro area. <laughs> Atlanta. I remember driving out in the very early morning hours, measuring the wind 60 plus miles per hour on top of my car. This brought so many power outages and lots mm -hmm. of tree damage in the area. Again, yeah. so far from the coast. Inland wind. It can be far reaching.